Hey guys, Levi with Trident Fly Fishing here, and today we're going to be tying a Quill Gordon. Quill Gordon's a mayfly that hatches in the East Coast, Northeast area, and it's one of the first large mayfly hatches of the year, so you can take full advantage of that. So we're going to start with a size 12 FW502 hook from A-Rex and size 8 aught tan unithread. So go ahead and wrap a body on there, thread, get a base, and snip that. And we're going to start by tying the wings in. Some people like to tie the tail first, some people like to tie the wings first. I'm a wing first guy, so that's how we're going to do it today. Get your thread about three-fourths of the way up the hook shank. And for the wing, we're going to be using mallard flank. It is mallard feather that's dyed to imitate the wood duck flank feather. So it's got a tan dye to it. It's a nice wing, good pattern to it. So when tying this in, go ahead and strip the fuzzy parts off first and get up, sweep these fibers back and go ahead and cut that top fiber off. Get rid of the stem there. You'll be left with this fire, or this feather. It has a nice V-notch in it. What that does is gets rid of the stem for your wings and uh, just kind of reduces bulk while making these a little easier to work with. So you want to measure your wings to be uh, about one and a half times the gap of the hook. So go ahead and tie those fibers in. And measure it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, once you tie those in, get them seated and you can cut that off. All right, and now get some wraps ahead of these fibers, and what that's gonna do is position everything upward. So now your fibers are upward, and the next step is to split these wings. You'll notice it's all one bunch. So what I do is pull them apart, try to get them as even as possible fiber-wise on each side, and now just figure eight wrap. One, two, three, four, five or six wraps should do it. Pull them upward and just make sure you like how they're sitting. And then you can wrap in front and behind just a couple more times to get everything neat and secured. All right, now from the wings, we're gonna move on to the tail. And for the tail of this fly, we are using mayfly tails. They're a synthetic tail and uh, we're using the color dark done. That's gonna be a nice color for this fly and it's also gonna match the natural Quill Gordons. And if you guys like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button below so you don't miss any of this. All right, so for fiber length and quality, we're gonna probably use hmm, six or so fibers, three or four on each side. So if you look at the natural Quill Gordon, they have a split tail. They only have two tails. And since we want some balance to this fly, we're gonna use a few more than two fibers, but we're gonna lay them on either side of the hook shank. And what that's gonna do is split this tail section, and it's gonna give a realistic profile on the water. You're gonna want the fibers to be a little longer than the shank of your, shank of your hook um, so that it makes a nice balance to this. So go ahead and secure those, and you can snip them. And then after you get it on that side, go ahead and grab three or four more fibers and do it on the side closest to you. Measure it out so that it matches what you have on the other side, and go ahead and tie those in. And you can position them as you wrap just to make sure that they remain on either side. All right, snip off the excess there, position this, and just get your thread all situated and ready for the body. For the body of this fly, we're gonna be using a stripped peacock hurl. So here's peacock, whenever you buy it in the package, you get your you know strands of hurl. What we need to do is actually remove all of these fibers here. 
And you can do that a number of ways. I've found it's just easiest to use a little bit of pressure with your thumb and your fingernail. I use my thumbnail and guide it along my finger, my uh, index finger, just like that. You're gonna need to do it a few times. I just pull, I hold it firmly. See that broke, but that's okay. Hold it firmly and I just pull it against my nail. And you can do that both sides. And it's gonna take a couple of times. It's kind of messy. Another option here is to take the eraser from a pencil and put these on a piece of notebook paper or something and just rub that eraser on there. This takes a little longer, but it's also something you can do just easily whenever you're tying these flies just right at the vise. And a stripped peacock quill, in my opinion, it's a pretty safe bet for imitating these segmented mayfly bodies. It gives a really nice effect. And uh, they're a little more durable than you would think too. And you can also, if you really are reaching for durability in this, you can go ahead and throw some head cement underneath of this. And that's not going to do any harm to the overall fly. It won't weigh it down or anything or reduce floatability, but it will increase durability. So that's something to keep in mind for those of you who want to get the most bang for your buck when tying these flies. All right. So we've got this thing pretty well stripped now, as you can see. And eh, we'll tie it in, get rid of the top finer portions. Go ahead and tie this in now. Go ahead and get it tied in right behind the wings. And when you're getting ready to wrap a body like this, you want to make sure there's a nice thread underbody and you don't have any gaps or anything. And if you're looking for a little bit of durability in this fly, now's a great opportunity to add some head cement and that will lock everything together. So wrap your peacock curl upward and get these wraps nice and tight to one another. So nothing, there's no steps or gaps or anything. And you'll notice that this gives a very nice segmented look that mimics that of the natural mayfly. It's a great pattern for those quill gordons. And once you get right behind the wings, go ahead and tie this off. All right, so for hackle, we're using a dark done saddle hackle. And when you tie that in, go ahead and do it right behind the wings. And secure your thread right behind the eye. When I tie hackle in, it's important to break the neck. This is something that came from George Harvey. All you're doing is pulling that feather at a parallel uh, to the hook shank. So when you do that, it breaks the rachis and it allows the fibers to stay a little less trapped and creates a cleaner hackle. So go ahead and put a couple of turns on there. Three behind the wing and I've got, let's see, four in front of the wing. And that's not a hard fast rule. It's gonna vary depending on the size of your flies and the fiber count of your feather. So once you've wrapped your hackle, go ahead and tie it off right behind the eye and if you want, it's a good idea to just throw a whip finish in there before you snip that off, or a half hitch rather, I'm sorry. All right, so clip that, and go ahead and whip finish that. And all of these materials can be found at tridentflyfishing.com, so if you wanna tie some of these flies for yourself, we have everything you need there. And that's it, whip finish is all you need, and thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next time.